Hello again everyone. So in this video, I'm going to give you an example of a vector subspace proof. Um, so I want to show that the subset W of the vector space R3, that's defined uh, like so. So the same example I used before in my previous video when I introduced vector subspaces. Um, so this was the example. So the same example, but now instead of telling you that it's a vector space, I want you to know how to prove that it's a vector subspace. Okay, so so maybe start with a with a with a recall. So remember what it means for something to be a subspace of a vector space. So we say that W is a subspace of a vector space of a vector space. It's just called the vector space V. Um, this, by the way, so is a vector space of, is a subspace of, sorry, can also be represented as this inequality sign. So we sometimes we write it like that. So that's what I'll be using from now on. So we just say W is a subspace of a vector space V. If the following three conditions are true. Or true. So the first condition is that the zero vector must belong to W. Okay. The second condition is closure under vector addition. In other words, if U and V belong to W, then the vector the vector addition U plus V will also belong to W. And finally, we have the closure under scalar multiplication. So suppose C belongs to F. In other words, C is a scalar and u belongs to w then we want to see if c scalar multiply u also belongs to w okay so when you do a vector subspace proof you have to keep that very abstract and very general so that it can apply to any any case any specific vector okay so let's start with the easiest one which is the first condition. Okay, so the first condition is does the zero vector does the zero vector belong to W? Okay. Well in in R3 the zero vector, so because we're dealing with a subset of R3, the zero vector is just three zeros. So zero zero zero. Now I want to know if this belongs to W. Well, to see if this belongs to W, what we basically need to do is we need to check the condition of W. So, check the condition of W. And the condition of W says that X1, so the first component, is equal to the sum of the following two components. In other words, X2 is 2 plus X3. So, let's check if this is true is 0 equal to 0 plus 0. Well, yeah, of course, that's that's obvious. So this is true, the condition holds, and so we can say that the 0 vector belongs to W, okay? So then the second condition is a bit harder, so it's showing that it's closed under vector addition. So now, let's take two arbitrary elements in W, Two arbitrary elements means that the only thing you know about those elements is that they belong to W. So suppose, suppose, um, let's call them U and V, just for, for the sake of using the same terms. U and V belong to W. Then that means that we, so as soon as you write that U and V belong to W, you, it's it's always easier to write what that means. So if u and v belong to w, then that means that u is equal to a three vector, sorry, a three component vector. So let's do u1, u2, u3, such that such that u1 is equal to u2 plus u3. Similarly for v, we know that v is then equal to a three component vector. That we'll write as v1, v2, v3, such that v1 is equal to v2 plus v3. So now what I want to check, what I want to check, I want to check if 
u plus v also belongs to w. So what this implies is this implies that the first thing I need to do is perform the vector addition. So I need to perform the vector addition. After, after I perform the vector addition, I need to check, check if the vector addition, which is actually, a, so the, the vector sum is actually in turn another vector. If the vector sum follows the condition of W, follows the condition, condition of W. Okay, that's basically what I'm trying to get at. Okay, so, okay, so let's do my first step. So my first step is actually performing the vector addition. So let's do the vector addition. So this might seem odd to you because you might have never done abstract addition before. You might have always done addition with, with numbers, but really it's the same thing. But instead of a number, you just have a variable. It's pretty much the same as, as algebra, really. So let's do u plus v. So u plus v is, um, you just rewrite what it actually is. So it's u1, u2, u3, plus v1, v2, v3. And I know that since I'm in R3 and that no other vector addition is specified, I'm going to assume, so assume the vector addition is, assume vector addition is component wise. Vector addition is component, component wise. And again, that's, that's just a fancy word of sa for saying that I add my first component in U to my first component in V, and I do the same thing for the second component and the third component. Okay, so what that'll give me, it'll give me U1 plus V1, and then U2 plus V2, and finally U3 plus V3, okay? So that's my vector addition. Now I wanna check, so I wanna check or verify, if you wanna be more fancy, verify that u plus v belongs to w i.e. i.e. i just want to show i.e. check that condition is still true the condition condi well, that the condition okay i can't write condition for some reason condition is still true okay what that means is i i have this vector now i want to see if because remember what the condition was? The condition was that the first component is equal to the sum of the second and third component. Okay, so let's go back. So what that means is I want to see if I want to see if this guy here, this component here, is equal to the sum of this guy plus this guy. Okay, that's what I want to check. So I want to check if this sum gives that guy. Okay. Of course, they're not real persons, they're just variables. So what I'm trying to check, so I'm trying to check if, check if, or whether, suppose would be better. And I, I use a question mark to, to, to sort of highlight the fact that I'm, I don't know if it's true yet, I wanna see if it's true. So I wanna see if u1 plus v1 is equal to u2 plus v2 plus u3 plus v3. Okay, so like in any proof or sort of trying to show inequality, you start with one side and you try to get to the other side. So in this case, I'm going to start with my left-hand side, which is just u1 plus v1. So my left-hand side is equal to u1 plus v1. But because, because initially, initially I had said that I had said that u and v belong, so let me use a different color. I had said that u and v belong to w, meaning that u1 was equal to u2 plus u3, and v1 was equal to v2 plus v3. So what I can do is I can use, so this is sort of like an assumption. This is an assumption. So I can use this assumption to replace u1 plus v1. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. So, so by assumption, by some 
uh, this is equal to u2 plus v2 plus u, wait, sorry, not u2 plus v2, this is equal to u2 plus u3 plus v1 plus, sorry, v2 plus v3. Okay, okay, so I probably already confused you. Okay, what I was saying is u is equal to u1, u2, u3. So I knew initially that because u belonged to w, u1 was equal to u2 plus u3. So that's what I wrote. I just wrote u1 is equal to u2 plus u3. Similarly for v, v is equal to v1, v2, v3. But I know that because v belongs to w, that v1 is equal to v2 plus v3. And so that's what I wrote, v2 plus v3. I just confused myself, but I, I hope that makes sense. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to group them because this is now just an addition. This is an addition over over the real numbers. Over the real numbers because we're dealing with R3. And so uh, commutativity and associativity is implied. So what I can do is I can group U2 and V2 together. And then I can group U3 and V3 together. So that's equal to U2 plus V2 plus, and then I have U3 plus V3. Okay, and why is this important? Well, because that's what I was trying to get initially. I have my U2 plus V2, which was on my right hand side and my u3 plus v3, which was also on my right-hand side. So I've, I've essentially shown, I've shown that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, proving that or showing that my condition holds. So this shows, this shows that the condition, the condition of my vector subspace holds. Hence, hence what this means is, hence u plus v belongs to the, uh, to w, okay? And, and so this, this, this proves, so this proves that w is, so w is closed, is closed under vector addition, vector addition, okay? So that's what that shows. Okay, so we're, we're almost done. We, we, we checked the first condition, which, which was the zero belong to W, it does. And then we checked the second condition that if U, U plus W belongs to, U plus V, sorry, belongs to W. Now the third, the third and final condition is checking closure under scalar multiplication. Okay, so I'll do that here because or else it'll, it'll be hard to come back to it. So, Let's do condition three here. So now suppose, suppose C belongs to F. I suppose in this case, we should specify R. Um, so we have an arbitrary scalar that belongs to, really it belongs to real numbers. And we have a vector U belonging to W which uh, means that u is equal to a three component vector u1 u2 u3 and again that means that because because of the condition stated over here i always come back to this condition because it's it's the whole it's the whole definition of w so that means that u is equal to the three component vector and that the first component is equal to the sum of the second and third components. Okay, so now I want to verify. So basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to check, I'm trying to check that C, or really prove that CU belongs to W. By the way, the reason why I said that C actually belongs to real numbers is because I'm dealing with R3 so suppose C belonged to the complex numbers, then it would sort of it would sort of mix you up. So just really specify what 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 the type of vector space you're dealing with um, in terms of scalars, and that would be R. Okay. So check that C U belongs to W. So what that implies that implies that the first thing I need to do is actually perform 
So I need to perform the scalar multiplication. Multiplication. And the second thing I need to do is check that CU <clears throat> excuse me obeys the condition. The condition given by W. So W is condition, i.e. that the first component is equal to the sum of the next two components. Okay, so let's do let's do the scalar multiplication. So scalar multiplication. Okay, so if I do C times U, or really this is scalar multiplied, then that's just C U1, U2, U3. And because I'm dealing in R3 and we don't have any reason to not use the the, the assumption of the, the basic definition of scalar multiplication, which is just I take my C and I scalar multiply each component. So because, because it's not specified otherwise, that's what you can do. You can assume that that's the scalar multiplication they want. So that will give you CU1, CU2, and CU3. Okay? So now what I want to do, so, so this is this is equal to CU. So I want to check. So now I'm going to check my condition. Check if CU belongs to W by verifying the condition. So really what I'm trying to see, what I'm trying to see is I'm trying to see if CU1 is equal to CU2 plus CU3. Okay, because I have the first component and I want to see if it's equal to the sum of the following two components. Right, so I have a question mark here because I don't know if it's true. Okay, this time I'm going to start with the right hand side and try to get to my left hand side. Okay, so my right hand side is CU2 plus CU3 and your first instinct is probably to factor the C and that's the correct instinct. So you'll get C times U2 plus U3. This, by the way, is now an operation over the real numbers. So we can factor and sort of add and associate however we want as we're used to over the real numbers. Okay. And now I know that because U belongs to W, that u1 is equal to u2 plus u3 so i can say that i can substitute u2 plus u3 by u1 okay so i just i just substitute this guy by u1 so i get c c u1 and that's what i was looking for so this is equal to my left hand side and so i've shown that the sum of the second and third component or i'll probably show you here the sum of the second and third component is indeed equal to, so when you add this, it's actually equal to the first component, which shows us that CU belongs to W, okay? So, CU belongs to W, closed under scalar multiplication, multiplication, okay? And so we can write that by 1, 2, and 3, W has, well, not has, W is, is a vector subspace, subspace, whoa, okay, vector subspace of R3, or if you would have wanted to write that faster, which I probably should have done, you can write W is the subspace of R3, which is really V, okay? And that's how you would, you would typically prove any subspace proofs. So I'll do, I'll do more um, in, in the following videos and I'll also do somewhere it turns out that it's not a vector subspace.